Hi, I'm Les Duthis. Welcome to my channel about my fledgling HEMA journey. In this video, we'll be doing another weekly review of my steel longsword sparring performance at the last meetup. We'll try to understand what the hell I was doing and how I might do it better next time. All right, let's do this. At this last meetup, I had another two things I wanted to do going in. First, I wanted to protect my right side better. All too often, swings were slipping by on the right, which means I was probably doing something wrong. Secondly, I wanted to focus on blade grabs while grappling. I had been trying to grab the hilt of my opponent's swords, but it rarely resulted in a clear win. I thought maybe if I grabbed the blade above the hilt, things would improve. During the preceding week, I had been practicing indoors for 15 minutes a day as usual. And one final note, the guys that I'm fighting are taking it easy on me. So anyway, here's what happened. Here, despite my pre-swing telegraph step, I get a decent hand hit and withdraw under cover. My measure training is coming along. Here, the Black Warrior is tired of my bullshit hand sniping and overwhelms me with an explosive combo, ending with a hit on my elbow. At least I successfully protected my right side at one point. Hoping to avenge myself, I try to rush the Black Warrior. I get a solid arm hit but I don't go up to cover, so I might have gotten sliced on the side of the head. I think about doing a blade grab, but nothing happens. Here, the Black Warrior strikes, so I parry and go for a hasty blade grab, but I miss and my arm gets hit. My sword, acting on its own, makes a token hit on the Black Warrior. Here, the Black Warrior unleashes another devastating combo. And I cover the right side once, but he gets around the second time. I should probably learn to counterattack in this situation. Here, I telegraph my strike, and the Black Warrior sets up for a Colpe di Villano, hoping to direct my blade off to the side so he can spin his point into my head. However, my point doesn't fall much, and I rapidly block and go back into guard. All right, my right side is protected. Next, after really exploring the ring, the Black Warrior strikes. I appear to respond instantly, but my coiled post Didona guard is too slow to come around, and my hand is whipped by the flat of his blade. Then, even though I go into Ox, my hand gets hit again. The last strike is deflected by my cross guard and then it's over. Here, we have a dance off. Next, I counter thrust and cover the first follow up, but my blade is high and unthreatening. The second follow up gets me from the side. This is another situation where I'm parrying without attacking and I get hit. Here, I try to stay moving and unpredictable. I charge in and the Blue Warrior parries, but part of the parry was done by the Blue Warrior's glove against my blade edge, so that's something. I miss the blade grab and he hits me in the back. Here, the Blue Warrior does a grip change, which enrages me, so I charge in. As I look for a blade grab opportunity, the Blue Warrior grapples my arm, and that's that. Here, I find that I've speared the Blue Warrior's glove, so I reflexively push off. Then I maintain guard. All right. Here, I do what might be the ultimate counter thrust. Then I maintain guard. The Black Warrior comments that this is the best action you've ever made. 
All right, so to recap, I protected my right side more consistently, so that's good. Next time, instead of just parrying strike combos, I want to counterattack. And instead of using guards where my point is behind me, I want to use guards that keep the point more forward. I'm going to continue my 15 minute a day practice routine as is, but take it into my backyard where I'll fight a menacing six foot tall wooden fence post. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And as always, remember, you are the master of your fate, the captain of your soul. By the way, if you want to watch more of my videos, here they are.